Hi, this is Leonie from Spines and Splines, and today we're turning an ugly duckling into a swan, and by that I mean we're transforming some actual rubbish into a beautiful artwork. I started with a photo taken along the canal on my walk to the studio, then flipped it in Photoshop so that it will print in the correct direction when it's done. I adjusted the translucency of the image so my line work would be easier to see, then started tracing the thinner lines with a contrasting colour. I switched to the airbrush tool to indicate the areas where I'd need to add shading and tonal marks, then switched to a larger regular brush to give more depth to the drawing where it was needed. I hid the original photo, made the line work black and printed my image. I included the crop marks in my print so I'd know where to cut, which I did with a steel ruler and utility knife. I glued the image down to a piece of scrap cardboard that I'd kept from a packet of pillowcases we recently bought. This dry print was for a second wedding anniversary, which traditionally calls for cotton gifts, so I thought this particular piece of cardboard would be appropriate. When everything was glued up and dry, I started scoring the thin lines lightly with a scalpel. These lines will catch the etching ink, so I kept them as loose as I could while always cutting away from my other hand. I went over some of the lines with a thicker pointed dry point needle, then switched to a roulette wheel to add texture and shading. A roulette wheel is a small rotating drum with a raised pattern on it, and pushing it into the cardboard will create indentations where the ink will sit. My roulette wheel has a dot pattern, and they also come with line patterns. You can use anything with texture here that will leave an indentation in the cardboard. I used the pointed end of my bone folder to score into the thicker lines on my drawing, and when all that was done, I dotted some craft PVA glue where I wanted to add shade and dimension to the water around the swan. The glue alone will add texture and interest to this type of print, but I also added a sprinkling of carborundum grit, which is the abrasive stuff they use to make sandpaper. When the glue was dry, I sprayed the front and back of my cardboard plate with crystal clear sealant to protect it from the ink and water used in the printing process. I deliberately oversprayed some spots so that the sealant would pull and create more texture on the plate. The ink I'm printing with is some graphic chemical company graphite etching ink that was rescued from a faulty dried up tube returned to the shop I worked at in Australia. The ink had hardened at the top of the tube and couldn't be squeezed out, so we cut it open at the base and decanted whatever usable ink we could get out into a small jar. It was still quite stiff, so I mixed in a touch of Caligo wiping compound, which loosens the ink up and makes it easier to wipe back. I applied the ink to my plate with a scrap of rubber, then gave it a quick wipe with my tarlatan and a page from the phone book before blotting the water from my BFK, which had been soaking for about 15 minutes, and I ran everything through the etching press. The paper I used for printing was torn down from a scrap of BFK reeves left over from an old project. BFK is my favourite printmaking paper and it's also made from 100% cotton rag just to add to the traditional anniversary gift theme. To finish, I added some washes of watercolour. Because my paper was still damp from the printing, the watercolour soaked right in, giving the image a really soft finish and helping to exaggerate the shape of the swan. I should apologise Got stuck in my something This is an awkward time Would you prefer a note or something If you've watched any of my other videos you'll know that Spines and Splines is all about maintaining healthy work habits while working on creative projects So to go with this video we have a quick but hard workout that will help make your arms as strong as the wings of a swan Maybe Swans are pretty strong they could probably destroy us all if they wanted to. And I'll compromise a stupid conversation. Please hit the like button, subscribe, share and comment if you like this video. And stay tuned to Spines and Splines for more creative projects and simple exercises you can do in your studio or workspace. Cheers!